You're watching live now from Fox. I'm Daytona Everett. I am joined by Jessica Levinson. She is our constitutional law expert, a professor at Loyola Law. Thank you so much for being on the show again, Jessica. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of legal news out of Texas. For sure. So we actually spoke last night over the phone um, talking about what is going on with abortions in Texas. A, a new restrictive law was passed not long ago. And then there was obviously a block, a possible block of the new law. And then that was appealed. It's confusing for all of us. Can you break it down? It's super confusing, but I think you actually did a great job of explaining what's going on. Uh, on September 1st, SB 8, Texas's uh, restrictive abortion law that essentially bans all abortions after six weeks of pregnancy went into effect. It went into effect uh, mainly because the Supreme Court didn't block it. And then the next day said, here's why we're not blocking it. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been a number of lawsuits since then, but the one that made news yesterday is a district court judge, Judge Pittman out of Texas, who was appointed by President Obama, said, Texas, stop enforcing this law. So any members of the Texas government, whether it be the clerk who accepts a filing or a judge who oversees a hearing, do not enforce this law. Now, this is a really weird case, and I think this is where it gets kind of confusing because Texas's law isn't set up like other abortion laws where if you violate it, then the government comes in and enforces that law and prosecutes the violation. Instead, Texas's law says any private individual can sue another private individual for aiding, abetting, or abetting a woman in trying to obtain an abortion. So it's really private person versus private person. Now, what happened in this particular case, the Department of Justice, the federal government sued Texas and they said, we get to sue you because you passed a law and members of your government are implementing a law that violates the federal law. What's the federal law? Basically Roe versus Wade. Right. It, Texas defended themselves in this law, in this lawsuit, and they said, we're not the ones enforcing this. You know, basically try your hand somewhere else. And what happened uh, yesterday on Wednesday is that the district court judge said, I do have jurisdiction. I can rule in this case. Texas, you can be enjoined, meaning you can be stopped from implementing this law. And uh, the judge said he doesn't think that the law is constitutional. So that's what has already happened. OK, well, we're seeing some of these clinics open back up today um, and start to be operating again. If you're speaking to a girl right now who is in Texas who wants to get abortion. Could she get one done legally? Yeah, the reason I'm pausing is because strangely, this actually isn't a totally straightforward answer. Right. So I believe there's a 24 hour waiting period in Texas. So you can get the ball rolling on that right now. Now, the reason I pause is for two reasons. I think that Texas's the decision in the district court to push pause on Texas's law will likely be temporary. Mm -hmm. So the appeal went from Texas, went straight to the Fifth Circuit, I think within an hour. Mm -hmm. The Fifth Circuit is very conservative. I think they're likely to overturn this district court decision. The other reason that I kind of pause is because Texas's law is written so that if you do help a woman obtain an abortion while there's an injunction, meaning while a judge has paused that law, then you can later be sued if that injunction is lifted. So anybody who's helping that woman obtain an abortion is potentially going to be sued when and if that injunction is lifted. That's why it's it's a very complicated legal and practical answer. Is there a timeline on all of this? Because like you said, it, it took just an hour for it to be appealed last night. So what is the timeline on the possible lifting of the injunction? So I believe that was actually just the notice of appeal. It was, hey, Fifth Circuit, like we're coming, get ready for what we're gonna ask you to do, which is basically swat away what the trial court did. Is there a timeline? No, I mean, everybody understands that this time is of the essence, but the Fifth Circuit can take a day, a week, 
If they want to take a month, they can. I don't think that they will. But there's nothing in this case where it, something is set in a court mm -hmm. and you can't change that date. This is really a kind of an education for people that federal judges can set their own timelines. Yeah, which brings up an interesting point for these abortion clinics, because as we know, with the pandemic, businesses can't close their doors and open their doors the next day. There's a lot that goes into that. So there's a lot of questions right now for these abortion clinics and for women um, out in Texas in hopes of getting an abortion. You know, I don't know if you have a clear answer for either of those parties. Well, I mean, I think the answer, frankly, depends on your risk tolerance. So for women who are able to um, find an abortion provider who's willing to take on the risk that this injunction could be lifted really at any time and that whoever helps that woman could later be sued and that they could owe money damages, then, you know, you can go forward. It really depends on who you can find, whether or not they can withstand one of these lawsuits again, when and if an injunction is, is lifted. And do we know what they would be facing? So we know that um, you can face, I think, really an indefinite number of lawsuits from private individuals. And if those individuals are successful against you, you pay $10,000, your attorney's fees, and the other person's attorney's fees as well. So it, it really does add up. Yeah, um, especially depending on how many patients um, that these clinics are taking in at this time. You know, I think that clears up a lot of the questions that people have right now. Our focus is on Texas, but we brought up an interesting point yesterday um, talking about how Texas could just be a precedent for other states. Do you still feel the same way? I do. In, in the 24 hours, my mind, although it often does change, has not changed that much. I will say, I think we need kind of a longer horizon to determine whether or not other states like Florida will pass laws that look like Texas's law. And the reason I say that is, as you know, and as we've talked about, there's this big Mississippi case that will be heard before the Supreme Court on December 1st. Mississippi essentially bans all abortions after 15 weeks. There's really no way to square that law with Roe versus Wade. And I think for a lot of us, we thought, well, we're just going to be waiting till June 2022 when the court makes its decision in that case, really to determine what the landscape is going to look like, what states can do in terms of restricting access to an abortion. I still think that that long term horizon is largely true. But what people should look for is that this Texas case could keep going up and down mm -hmm the federal court system. Frankly, I think that Judge Pittman's ruling, we know it's going to the Fifth Circuit. Whoever loses almost certainly will go to the Supreme Court. I think the Supreme Court is going to have to answer again mm. about what's happening with this temporary injunction in Texas before it even hears that Mississippi case on December 1st. Right. So you think before December, we could be getting some answers from as high as the Supreme Court? Not definitive answers about the constitutionality of Texas's law, but really good indications about what the Supreme Court is thinking. Mm, interesting. All right. Well, I'm going to leave it on that cliffhanger. <laughs> Jessica Levinson, thank you so much for being on the show. We appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Thank you.